So I've been worried about not being able to keep my cool lately. Cool as in the transmission on my wife's 86 crew cab. We pulled this out of a field six or eight months ago. Some farmer had it. We put a 60LS in it and a 4LAE, and I'm gonna be honest. When I put this thing together, I just did the bare minimum as far as transmission cooling for this thing, just to get me by. I'm like, I'll address it later. Well, it's later. We've been pulling trailers with this thing, some heavy, on some crazy terrain that we have around here, and I've just been hoping, waking up in the middle of the night, worried that I'm overheating the transmission on this thing, and then I'm going to smoke it, and then have to borrow money from my mom, dad, aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, nephew, in order to replace it, because I'd don't set it up right. Well, now's the time. I have dug through shoe boxes. I've dug through the attic. I've looked in every drawer in the shop and I've come up with a hodgepodge of components that I think will allow me to monitor and control, somewhat anyway, the transmission temperatures in this truck. So I want to take you inside. I'll We'll pull the truck in, I'll show you what we got, and then after I'm done, I will hopefully be showing you a system that is actually working. So, thank you for watching, and hope you enjoy this little video. So bear with me for just a second while I explain in far more detail than you really want to know why I'm using what I'm using and what I'm using. So I am using this kit because I have it and it doesn't cost me anything, it's just stuff that I got laying around and it will achieve the same goal as a store-bought unit that is more compact. So this is a temperature display slash controller, an Omega CN142, that operates off anywhere from 24 volts DC up to 240 volts AC. So I don't have 24 volts in the truck to operate this controller, so I need a step-up transformer. 12 volts come in, 24 volts at five amps on this unit come out. So now I can power in my truck, or in Elizabeth's truck, this little display slash controller. So this here, which is a type K thermocouple, it will read the temperature of the transmission fluid at the cooler. It will send a signal back and display it on our display and I can beep, 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 boop, 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 can beep, 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 boop, 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 adjust just by the simple push of a button when I want a fan to kick on or off based on the transmission fluid temperature. So another issue is I really don't want to use this little controller to be switching the load of that uh, relatively heavy duty fan. So I'm going to take all of the load off of this thing with our good friend, the relay. This will be doing the heavy switching of the power to kick on and off the fan. I'm not too concerned to burn up a relay. Uh, you know, I'd rather this just send a signal to a relay and it do the switching instead of running all that power from that that is required for the fan through this little unit here. So that's a little extra there. So that is the kit that I'm using, and I need to find a way to install this in the truck. All of this stuff will be hidden, but this is, needs to be visible obviously. So we need to find a way to install this in the truck that does not look completely cobbled to pieces and janky. So I've been in the truck here digging around trying to find a good spot to mount this controller and I think that I've found the perfect spot. Um, I don't like drilling holes making a bunch of modifications to any vehicle to be honest. So what I did is I opened up the ashtray. This is the insert and me and Elizabeth we don't smoke so I pulled this out and this controller fits almost perfect. It's a little bit, a little bit larger, but I can make this work just awesome. And when you want to see the, see it, you just flip the ashtray down. When you don't, you flip it up and no one knows the difference. So that is the perfect spot, I think, to mount uh, this little display controller. So that's what I'm gonna do, mount it in the ashtray. All right, so it's Steve Summer story time. While I'm pulling off this grill, I've got a, a kind of an interesting story to tell you. This week, I gotta pull off the grill because I gotta get to the fan, the fan that I'm using and the, um, and the, uh, uh, what is it? Gosh, <sighs> transmission temperature unit, radiator, cooler. Anyway, I was coming down a ladder at work. It's like a limited access ladder. It's got the round rungs, kind of like a utility ladder uh, on the side of a structure. Uh, I was coming down it. It was wet. I had, you shouldn't do this, but I had a heavy item in one hand and I was kind of working my way down this ladder. 
and um, I got to what I thought was the bottom step. I wasn't paying good attention. I got to what I thought was the bottom step, and I stepped off. And I tell you, I, I was up, dusting myself off, nervously looking around to see if anybody seen me fall before I even realized I'd actually fell. I hit the ground so fast and so hard that I think that I blacked out for just a second. My face and my beard took the brunt of the, uh, of the impact. I slid on a really rough textured sidewalk. I guess my shoulder kind of caught me first, but I had safety glasses on and it scratched those safety glasses all to pieces. I was, I had, was in close contact with that concrete and uh, the safety glasses jammed into my eyebrow so hard that it cut me the length, probably three quarters of the length of my eyebrow. You can't really see it because my eyelashes are covering it as deep as you can be cut on that area. I mean, it was gapped, not a pretty sight, but it closed right up and um, yeah, I didn't go to the doctor to get stitches. My wife's been, Elizabeth has been caring for it, but I did not want to go because I knew that they would shave my eyebrow off and then I'd look like a goof. You know, I've been known to fall off the ladder every now and then just from lack of paying attention or getting in a hurry. But believe me, you can hit the ground so hard and so fast that you don't even know you fell. So here's the fan that's going to be blowing through the transmission cooler and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook 12 volts to this and then run the ground inside of the cab and do the switching with the relay to switch the ground. That's that's the plan. So I'm going to snip these wires. So this originally is controlled by the AC which we don't have on this truck at the moment but I'm going to keep this in a way to where I can always go back if I ever put AC on this truck you know we can just switch it back to the way that it was factory. So this fan is factory to the truck. It says Davis Craig, Aust Davis Davis Craig, Australia. Uh, got little arrows that show direction of rotation. It's a pusher fan. It says this side must face the rear of the vehicle, but it says made in Japan on the motor. Hmm, maybe the fan blade is made in Australia, and the uh, and the uh, actual motor is made in Australia or er, Japan. I want to see. What is the proper direction of rotation? Which powers my positive? Which one's my negatory? Goodness, I don't have a good set of alligator clamps anywhere. How about that? Wow, that is a strong fan. I'm just hot wiring it here. So for butt connectors, connecting two wires together, I used to use the old crimp type, I think everybody did, but I've went to these solder type connectors. So they're a heat shrink with a little glue and a ring of somewhat some low temperature alloy solder and just slide them together like that. And then use your heat gun. You don't even need a lighter for these. Just use your heat gun. I like to try to intertwine the wires if I can. like that and then you just apply a little heat I'll show you and that solder melts and it makes a really good connection so if you watch that ring of solder it will melt you know it's a nice soldered and sealed connection to water nothing can get in there I like those then sometimes you know, I'll back them up with just another little piece of heat shrink just to be safe, but probably not needed. That's about as good a connection as you're going to get, as far as I'm concerned. So there's our thermocouple fitting. It's just a 6AN fitting and a couple compression 
adapters there and you can see through that fitting and you can see I've just got the tip of this thermocouple ran down to where it's just in the fluid stream that will be going through this fitting. So I'll just snug that down and then we can install this in our transmission fluid line or our cooler line and then it'll send that temperature signal back to the controller. So I just cut the top off of a, one of those big Rubbermaid totes. Cut the top off that. It makes a great pan for catching antifreeze or transmission fluid or something like that. Obviously you can buy big pans, but if you've got one of these laying around, you know, they work as well. I gotta unhook this cooler line and put my temperature fitting in it. Temperature probe installed. So the circuit down to the fan is done. We've got a power wire ran from the positive battery post through a fuse. And then this is, this is the ground lead. So when I make this connection, that should kick on. That's a noisy fan. It moves a lot of air. So our circuitry so far, is good. Now I'm just going to, this goes in, this wire here goes in the cabin and we'll hook to our relay. You doing okay? Where's your toy at? Hmm? Where's your little raccoon at? What'd you do with it? Oh, it's a little raccoon. Oh, and it's got a squeaky bit. Oh, good catch. So all of my work is done out there, other than reassembling the grill. Now I'm gonna mount this transformer, step up transformer, and I think I'm gonna mount it right up here. That's a good, I think a good spot for it. So we have, this wire gets grounded. This is a, a switched fused 12 volt source, and then this just goes to our little controller that we're gonna be mounting in here. So it's the moment that at least four of you have been waiting for, and that is, does this thing work? Obviously, I fast forwarded a little bit. Only one or two of you probably want to see me pull wire. Most of you just want to see if this thing works, and so do I. So I have got all of my wire ran. It's not tucked and needed neat as like it should, like it will be, but it's good enough to see if this thing works. So let's see. It does, it flashes. And it's saying that the fluid temperature or the temperature of the thermocouple right now is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And our set point is 192. So I should be able to lower, yeah, I should be able to lower this set point to 60 degrees or 59 degrees and it should kick on that fan out there.
it didn't work. Why is it not working? I heard the relay click. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to put the fuse in there. I wasn't worried that my wiring wasn't wasn't good and ought to leave in a little bit. Let me stick this fuse in out here and then we'll try this again. Now it should work. So all I got to say is this better work. And it's down to 59 degrees outside now. Oh yeah, it is working. That is awesome. So now I can monitor transmission temperatures and kick a fan on if it gets higher than what I like. Boom, shakalaka. So I've got the truck outside, and if you do not want to hear an overly complicated explanation as to how the system's plumbed up, well, fast forward a little bit, and you can just see us take a ride and see if the system works. But for those of you who are interested on how I got my system plumbed, you know, stick around. Also, disclaimer, I do not plan or claim to be a thermal engineer, nor do I work for a big auto manufacturer designing cooling systems on automatic transmissions. So do your own research. This is just what I've gathered from the research that I have done. So let me get you down, get you a good shot in here and show you the way that I ended up plumbing this system up. It is not exactly how it's gonna be, but it's close. So what had me worried about keeping the cool of the transmission on this thing in the very beginning was I was only running that small stacked, well it's not small, it's actually a pretty large stacked plate cooler, just air to fluid cooler that you've seen that I got the fan mounted from on the front of the radiator here, that's all I was using. I was not using the cooler, the transmission cooler that's built into the side of the radiator here. And that's built into basically every automatic transmission radiator that I have seen almost on the planet. I was not using that. And the reason I wasn't using it is because this radiator come out of that parts truck and it had a burnt transmission and I did not want to risk flushing a bunch of trash out of this cooler into the transmission. So I flushed it out as good as I possibly could and I hope, I'm hoping that it's good enough. So now the way that my system is set up, which should be plenty sufficient, hot fluid comes from the transmission through this line, runs in to the bottom of the side tank of the radiator here, which houses a small fluid to fluid heat exchanger. And it dumps some of that heat from the transmission into the same coolant that is used to cool the engine. It comes out this top line and then it runs to the cooler, the stacked plate air to fluid cooler that I have on the front of the radiator here. It goes out of that cooler after dropping temperature even more and then goes back to the transmission. After it's all done with that cooling loop, that should be enough to keep this thing cool. Now, there are a lot of people online who argue to the blue in the face that uh, they're worried that running the transmission fluid through the radiator here is going to keep that transmission fluid at the same operating temperature as the radiator or as the engine because it shares that same coolant. And from my experience with a temperature gun, checking temperatures across this radiator, by the time the fluid gets over here, because it comes out hot, it goes into the far side of the radiator. And by the time it gets all the way through this radiator, it's dropped quite a bit in temperature, you know, 20, 30 degrees, maybe even more. So it's not going to run, your transmission is not going to run at the same temperature as the radiator. But that fluid to fluid cooler that's in here is probably far more effective in my thinking than what that air to fluid cooler is on the front. Even though it does help, I think you can dump a lot more heat into water quicker than you can into air. So that is the way my system is plumbed up. I'm not saying that you know, the guys who are against these are necessarily wrong. I just don't think myself that these auto manufacturers who've been doing this forever, just like this, are wrong. So this is the way that I've got my system plumbed up, and I'm hoping that it will work and keep the transmission, you know, in an acceptable temperature range. So let's jump in the truck and uh, take this thing for a spin. It's gotten dark on me and see if it does do what it's supposed to do. So something that I failed to mention and something that I'm going to change is that currently my thermocouple is reading the temperature of the fluid at the exit of the second cooler here. Really to monitor transmission temperatures, the tr thermocouple needs to be mounted in the pan. But just to save time, you know, I stuck it in that line for now. I need to drop the pan, weld in a bung, and put my thermocouple directly into the pan. This should give me a relatively close 
but not apples to apples reading of temperature. So, you know, that's where we're at at the moment anyway. It'll still be, you know, still let me know if I'm way over hot or if I'm, not, you know, in acceptable range. All right, so I've got you in the truck with me here. We are about to pull out on the main road here. Actually, it's a little country road and you can see it's darker than dark outside. It's not necessarily the best time to be filming, but let me get you down here on the display. And you can see that top number is the fluid temperature of the transmission. That's what the thermocouple's reading. And the bottom number is the set point at which the fan kicks on. So as we're going here, it's pretty cool outside, so I'm expecting that temperature to drop. And you can see that it is, so it's giving me a pretty responsive reading of the fluid temperature that, you know, that's coming out of the cooler. And that's one reason why this should be in the pan, because you're not going to see drops in temperature of the transmission quite as quick as what we're seeing there. We're not going to reach with the temperatures that it is outside, 160 degrees, and kick that fan on. But hopefully this gives you a little idea of what it looks like in the truck, you know, the function of it. Obviously we can, on the fly, change that set point. And sometimes the transmission will heat up in town quicker than it will out on the interstate. You know, you're putting around, maybe you're pulling a trailer through stop and go traffic and it's a hot day. Sometimes when you get out on the interstate, you've got a lot of air flowing through the radiator or through the through your transmission cooler and radiator, I guess, and your torque converter's locked up, your transmission temperatures may stay in check. But you know, it sometimes can be odd when a transmission heats up. Just like you can burn up a transmission spinning a lot in a mud puddle or in the snow stuck. So having a way to monitor transmission temperatures, I think, is you know, pretty important and this I think is going to work really good especially when I get my temperature probe inside the pan of the transmission so there you go it works and if I want to if I want to you know not not see the, see it just close the glove box or close the ashtray pretty neat pretty neat Try not to bounce you guys around too much. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I think that this little setup is gonna work as soon as I can get my, it'll work better once I get the thermocouple in the pan, but I mean, you get the idea. It's gonna do the things it's supposed to do, I think. And the main thing is give me the peace of mind and the information to go by knowing, or at least being able to tell if the transmission in this thing starts to get above an unacceptable range or not but with not knowing for me it's kind of eating me up so glad to get that unit installed and uh glad i got to share a little bit of it with you so thank you for watching viewers patrons subscribers anyone who's helped me out whatsoever it is much appreciated so that's it thanks for watching i'll see you next time <laughs>